We're here with the industrial chiller from Monport. It's their six liter CW5200 industrial water chiller for their 40 watt through 150 watt CO2 lasers. I recently picked up one of their 40 watt CO2 lasers and I thought it would be smart to have the chiller to, you know, extend the lifespan of my CO, or I mean my um, laser tube. You can tell how professional I am here. Um, I'm new to CO2 lasers, so I want my CO2 laser to last as long as possible. So one factor to that is keeping the laser nice and cold. Heat is the enemy of the glass. So let's check this thing out here. I will say right away, I wish they had used their foam. Um, there's actual styrofoam in here. I just, I hate styrofoam. Those little balls get everywhere. But with the CO2 laser, it actually comes with very nice foam. Um, mind you, the CO2 laser is much more fragile, so makes sense. Everyone wants to save a little bit of money. And styrofoam is not that evil. So here we just have some, um, obviously the power cable. There's some extra fuses. There's some kind of power lug, maybe for adapting to different voltages or something. And then, yeah, so it's just the styrofoam and stuff. I want to get this out of the box out of, off camera because you can't really see much and we'll be right back. All right, we got it out of the box. All right away, I love this thing. It's heavy. Um, it says it's a team lift inside the box and I mean, it is, it is pretty awkward, but this thing is beefy and it has very two, two very solid handles on it. It's interesting. Some weird turquoise uh, mystery schmoo, probably just where they tested it. So yeah, um, let's get this bag off of here. Ooh, I just got static shocked from the plastic generating static electricity on the metal. <clears throat> All right. Oh, that cable is for the alarm outlet. Oh, that's heavy. Okay, let's get the camera a little better here. Well, it's pretty apparent what it is. It's the CW5200 Industrial Chiller. It's got an alarm, it's got a normal, you got a little set panel here and a screen, you're on off. This is your water reservoir. That's actually plastic, it's not metal, it just looks plastic. Yeah, they've tested it. There's a little bit of liquid. I appreciate that they tested it before it came because you're using this on some expensive equipment. Yeah, I can see the water in there and it, it, it smells like, um, distilled water with a little bit of plastic hint. I imagine the container might be plastic or it could just be this. There's also some kind of maybe antifreeze or something. Um, smells a little bit sweet. Could just be something to lubricate the threads though. So we do have a sticker up here. It's the temperature control and alarm illustration. It just kind of walks you through that. And again, you get your fill port and then a sign reminding you that caution it is strictly forbidden to start without water. A lot of water pumps, if you start them dry, it can destroy them almost immediately. So make sure you have water in there before you, you know, turn it on. Um, let's take a look at the side here. So I'm assuming this is your air filter or something. Oh, my fingernails just want to, there we go. My fingernails just want to bend. Oh, so this is your reservoir and stuff. And you do have a filter in there. Good copper plumbing. This is um, some kind of squishy plastic under there. Interesting. And then you have some fittings here. They have some kind of schmoo on them from when they 
um, attached it. It's probably just a little bit of adhesive. There's another tank back in here. I imagine that's the pump. Seems pretty heavy duty. What else can we see? You got a fan back here, so your radiator and stuff back there. They have glued the electrical connections in place, it looks like. Um, the copper here has some rubber on it. You got a little bit of schmoo from where they welded it. Nothing that I'm concerned about at all. And yeah, so that's that. We got the same kind of deal over here on this side. I won't show you that, but I am gonna take a peek real quick. My fingernails will cooperate. There we go. Pretty much the same view. Um, everything is bolted down to the bottom of the frame pretty well. The lugs are coming up, so they're not gonna scratch anything. And then, oh. On the back we have the inlet and the outlet. They got protective caps. You've got a little gauge here. We'll have to take a look at the manual and see what this is about. I'm assuming this is your water level because it says full, normal, and then if it's too low. Can you have this alarm outlet thing? Um, I only see a lug to connect to that with some kind of weird jack. I imagine that's something I'm not going to use in my case. Maybe it's a option on some lasers or something. And then you have two fans. They're pretty decent. Yeah, I was trying to see if there was any information on how much they displace. Um, maybe there, but I can't read it because of the grill. And you have your drain plug down on the bottom. Other than that, yeah, that's pretty much it. Obviously the tubes will be with your CO2 laser. You'll put them on here. I'm assuming these have barbs. Yep, pretty standard. So you get that on there and the barbs keep it in place. You fill this up to however much it says in the manual, which we'll get out right now. You hook it up to your laser, you run it for a few minutes, then you turn on your laser and you should be good to go. Let's see if my intuition is correct. Pretty simple manual, almost perfect English. Um, yes, this is the water level for the tank. Yeah, so like here's a little bit of English. Uh, open the package to check if the machine is intact, I-N-T-A-C-K. That's okay. You can still understand that that's supposed to be intact. Not a big deal. I, I've never seen a user manual that's perfect anyway. Um, it's not like it's a novel that's gonna sell a million copies. So open the water supply and inlet and feed cooling water. Do not spill out the water. I will say you only want to use distilled water in something like this. I'm sure it says that in here, but you don't want scale building up. You don't want chemicals in the water reacting with things. You don't necessarily want water that's got a bunch of stuff in it that leaks inside of the components because then you're going to deposit stuff and that could cause shorts and corrosion. And Distilled water is always going to be your best bet to use as a buck a gallon, something like that. Not a big deal. So it wants you to fill it with the water. Obviously, you're just going to watch that. Then you connect your inlet and outlet. Then you plug in the power only after this is full. And again, it warns you to not start it without water in the tank. So you check the water in the tank. You adjust the parameters um, of the temperature controller, which was up there on the front. And that's that. I'm gonna spin this around off camera real fast and we'll look at that controller. So again, you have your temperature controller here. The manual walks you through it. And again, you've got a pretty detailed thing up here, but basically you have a D1 and a D2. Um, they show the thermostat working state here and here. Your temperature is going to be here. D1 on thermostat works in intelligent control mode, off thermostat works in constant temperature control mode. And if it flashes, the thermostat works in parameter setting mode for D1. For D2, the chiller works in uh, refrigerating state, off the chiller works in the insulation working state. And if it flashes, the chiller works in the energy saving state. So, you press one of these and it's going to show you the, you press the down one and it'll show the room temperature for six seconds. Then you can adjust the display status. There's the reset and the enter key on the other 
side. But basically you just go in here and you look at the manual and figure it out. It, it, it doesn't seem too complicated. There's charts, there's everything. So that alarm out port, it has this diagram here and it just shows you which pins are for what. The different alarm output ports. Again, something I'm not really gonna use. And then you just have like specifications. And then a small troubleshooting thing, like machine turned on, but unelectrified. So I'm guessing if it's plugged in and turned on and nothing's happening. Um, if there's a flow alarm, it tells you what to do. Ultra high temperature alarm tells you what to do. But other than that, it is really simple. Um, the one thing I wish it said, which I did not see, is just how much water to put in, either in liters or gallons. But I do not see that. Um, Mon port, it'd be cool if you'd add that, if it's not in here. I will say one thing too, you're gonna fill this up, right? And then you're gonna hook it up and your water level is gonna drop because you've got a certain amount of tubing going into the machine and then the jacket around your laser, whatever parts being cooled, like the CO2 tube or whatever. So fill this up, but don't just ignore the water level after that. Fill it up, turn it on, let it circulate for a few minutes so you can push all the air out, get water in there and stuff. And then go back and look to see if you need to top the water off, um, adjust it accordingly. Pretty simple. This, I'm trying to see if this had instructions for cleaning it. I am not seeing instructions on here for how frequent to service it at a cursory glance, but like my 40 watt CO2 laser from them said you should uh, change the water weekly and drain it. So I'm assuming it's the same for this. Um, some of the reasons for that is you're gonna get stuff that's just in the system that's gonna get in there, but you're also going to potentially have like algae growth if the water wasn't perfectly you know, clean, if it wasn't perfectly distilled, because if there's any algae in there whatsoever, there may be some minerals dissolved in that water and you're putting them in a nice warm environment, which is just gonna help them grow. And then it's just kind of kind of sludge things up. So, you know, a week is what they recommended. Um, you're gonna do what you're gonna do, but I would definitely recommend changing the water with some regularity. And, you know, every time you go to use the laser, first thing I would do is I would check that water level. I would turn it on. I'd let it run for a minute or two through your laser. I would look for any visible leaks. I would check your water level again. Then I would use my laser because you're gonna to wanna to keep that thing cool. And if you're paying all this money for this thing, you don't wanna like overlook that simple thing. But yeah, that's it. That's the Monoport CW5200 industrial laser. Again, it's pretty simple. You plug that one barb into your in, you plug the out to the out on your laser, you're good to go. Um, yeah. I'm excited to use this thing. And it is beefy, man. Like, it is heavy. The, the bulk of that weight's probably the pump, and like, it's no joke. So, <laughs> yeah. I will see you in the next video. Have fun, stay safe.